Hello, welcome along to the show with Kelly. I'm right to your back. I'm back, man. It's very, the other people are nice, don't get me wrong, but it's better having it's you back. Of course it is, man. Uh, two games, last night in the Premier League. I'm going to bring your reaction from, uh, for the first time, this is my early for the, mm. the second half. Yeah, that's half quite, that's in always... That game, a... scored in a, in a seven-minute period in the, in the second half. Well, what do you think the difference was? As well, so we'll we'll talk about the top four and, and the balance there. First of all, we've got a big title race on our hands yeah. with nine games to go. There's only one point between these these two sides. Liverpool have now won nine games in a row, and over the last ten, they've kept seven clean, clean sheets. sheets. As much as there's the emphasis on on Liverpool's attacking players, there's been really solid defensive performance. They are elite, and they are elite mentally as well as they are they are physically. But having had that 14-point gap at one stage this season, and I know it was skewed by games in but to close that to, to one point, knowing that game after next is going to be the, the matchup at, at the Etihad, do you think they, not quite to the extent of, mm. but almost like Kevin Keegan kind of, well, they've got to do this and they've got yeah, to play here. And there was, there's just, <laughs> just an element of, of not nerves, but being affected by you it, could, you could. It's just interesting that this is the point at which it's, it's become a thing, in which it's, yeah. it's kind of gone. so interesting to watch the managers, because it feels like with, with Manchester City and Pep Guardiola, it's pressure making diamonds. It feels like it's, it's players. They, they bring in players and, and who go and then get taken get off for the very next second. <laughs> but what did you make of the finish? City are on 50 and Liverpool are on 55, both of which are extraordinary anyway. Mm. Saying, might not have that instinctive goal scorer, then it, they're still managing to still managing to Champions League qualification, which which will have been their aim. Mm. They are really comfortable there, and okay, they haven't taken a point off the the top three all season. They haven't won against any of the the top five, just individually, but as a group as well. They're, they're not yeah, as used to working with. Last night means that the title race is very much on between Manchester City and Liverpool. Just a point between them, and now they've played the same number of games. Arsenal really well placed in terms of fourth, particularly because they've got those games in hand. Uh, but Tottenham made sure that they're keeping themselves in the conversation with a 2-0 win against Brighton. We'll be looking back. Hello, welcome back to the Kelly and Wrighty show. Another big win for Tottenham against Brighton at the Amex last night and another big record-breaking occasion for Harry Kane. Talking about Harry Kane and he's yeah. now the Premier League's top scorer away from home. Got a way to to go until he reaches Alan Shearer's overall record yeah. week before. And he said he's worked with him quite a lot. He said, I feel like I've got a bit of a handle on him as a, as a human. He went, I don't think that is deliberate. I think that's just him <laughs> out. I was going to say, he's coming from, from anywhere. But it's, um, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in, in the future. But he's a manager who's, whose reputation is kind of intact, despite the fact that maybe Spurs haven't achieved what, or might not go on to achieve what they hope they would have achieved under Antonio Conte who they played last night, who's trying to preserve his reputation, in Graham Potter, who's, who's praised so much for the way that he approaches things. But that's six defeats in a row now for Brighton. They're on their worst run since 2006. And it feels as though they've reached a comfortable point and it's all come off the rails a little bit instead of, instead of creating their chances. Look, they're 11 points above, above Watford. Yeah. They're safe as far as the Premier League is, is concerned you know, in terms of, of their future for, for next season. But in ter terms of making that next step, is that something that the manager somebody who can do that for them or is that something that the club has to strike and it keeps just falling away at the end and they're reliant on a more pay to be informed? I get the impression... Spurs both at a crossroads at different parts of the table trying to decide what they want their identity to be going forward and what they're going to be aiming for, what the next step is and how to get there. For Everton, pretty clear what their next step is. It is a huge game for Everton tonight at Goodison Park where Newcastle are the visitors. Ahead of it, we can hear from Damari Gray.